Three, two, one. Hello, Mr. Manji. Today I'm with uh, Raheel Manji. He is the CEO of Mission Elite. Could you please um, talk to me a bit about your company and what do you do? Sure. So on this, you know, I overlook all operations within Mission Elite. Mission Elite is basically an organization that overlooks the top right now performance tennis players in the country and on an international scale. Uh, we have a blend of Davis Cup team members, Nash NCAA champions, uh, and overall professional uh, players that we overlook. And what we do is we provided a support team for the best players, uh, for, for these high caliber players to basically have through the, to navigate through the process of achieving their professional goals. And so we put together a support team to really help them from a nutritional standpoint, fitness standpoint, all supporting roles. And of course we have a base for them to really come in and go to work uh, back in, in, in home where our base is located is Scarborough, uh, Ontario. And it's a really cohesive culture. We, we, we prioritize character over everything so that we can really be as pr pr productive and efficient within that environment as possible to produce the best results. I overlook their progress and, you know, I try to be somebody that they can really rely on through, through the process to come to and, you know, basically have uh, on their shoulders. And, and then, you know, the company also has different other uh, alleyways, you know, we have mission lead apparel, we have mission lead uh, virtual, uh, which is basically uh, consultations and online services. Um, and, and we're, we're expanding, you know, in different ways every day, trying to really make a difference, do something unique in the sport and, and grow as a whole. Um, we've got a, uh, you know, team of staff and management that overlook the different aspects and, and the overall progression of the company. And, and uh, yeah, we're looking to continue to grow forward. So appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you for being on here. Um, what, what made you start Mission Elite? Like, what was your motivation behind that? Because I know you went to Indiana University. You were a big Division I tennis All-American athlete. What made you start Mission Elite? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to start Mission Elite as a way to, well, because, you know, it started with the NCAA as a way to connect. Um, and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to be active in, in the process of improving our, you know, the high caliber players within our country, within the U.S. on an international scale. And so there was huge motivation for me to start Mission Elite. But, you know, to be honest, to send a message to the world that being a great tennis player is not enough. Uh, you know, it's what you do with that. It's the impact you make with your skills. And you know, sometimes it's hard to always remember that every second of the day, but we always try to come back as a staff, as an organization, that the bigger picture purpose behind Mission Elite is not to prove how uh, significant we are, but really to use our platform, to use our experiences and to use our influence to really uh, make a difference uh, with people uh, from a character standpoint to help them with their lives. That's the whole reason. That's the goal. We want to help. You know, we want to use our influence to really make a difference in a humanitarian way. So what, what would you say your biggest uh, target audience is when it comes to Mission Elite? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, we, you know, we started off overlooking the best players and the professionals. Um, but as we've grown and expanded, now we're trying to find solutions and opportunities for uh, aspiring high performance uh, elite elites. You know, we're looking to help now juniors as well. Obviously, the core and the base are, you know, NCAA to professionals. But now we're looking to expand to help um, uh, aspiring high performers, juniors looking to navigate through and, and work towards professional. Um, and we're also overlooking or sorry, looking to expand in, in, in different uh, uh, categories, different sports, uh, different domains uh, that are all trying to achieve the same goal of becoming elite in their own uh, particular fields. So gotcha. makes sense. Well, what would you say your biggest road roadblock is when it comes to mission elite and how, how you got it off the ground? Yeah, I, you know, there's been roadblocks every single day. Um, so much adversity, so much uh, on our toes, you know, especially during a time like a pandemic. But I think our staff and our culture and the passion behind that, the cohesion between who we work with has really pushed us through those adversities. But, 
yeah, there's been a ton of curveballs. I think that the biggest one might be, um, you know, just, you know, we know that we can provide valuable products, but having the resources to basically implement those services to make the difference, you know, and that goes into facilities that goes into, um, you know, marketing, get it, you know, that goes into how many people can we reach and, and, and what resources do we need to be able to reach these people? Because look, and that's why we started virtually because we knew that we could help as many people as possible uh, through the internet, through online. Um, but we also know that that's, that's not enough. And so we work our butt off to then be able to actually manually help them through facility negotiations, through getting on court with these people, you know, to, through actually helping them through the training process. So um, our culture is basically got us through all the challenges, but every, you know, there's going to be another one tomorrow and there's one every day. So. Prior to the interview, we were talking about how you hire all the top, top athletes around the world, especially in America and Canada and how you resource, how do you, how you rent out fields like soccer fields. You're not only focused on tennis, but you're also focused on soccer and other sports. How do you plan on turning that into a profit and basically expanding the business? Well, if there's one thing I've learned from all of this, it's that if you build a product out of passion and it's a valuable service, the money comes. Uh, and, and that's what, that's what happened. You know, when, when people see w the difference we're making in the lives of some of the elite players, for example, they want to be a part of this. And to be honest, they're willing to pay top dollar to be a part of this because I think the product we, we do in the services we do and the support that we do give is so genuine, authentic, and, um, and, you know, really makes a big impact that they are willing to pay for this because it's not a business. I mean, this is not a business. Like our, our primary goal is not, was never when we started to purely for finances, there was a bigger purpose behind it all. And that almost, you know, in, I had a great mentor that told me, don't follow the money follow your passion and the money will come and because you're going to be the best at what you do. And that's what we really have. Like if you follow money, you're not following the thing that you're best at. We follow the thing we're best at. And as a result, uh, the money and the opportunities have come our value as a company, um, as individuals within the company has just skyrocketed, rocketed as a result of showing the world what we can offer, um, in our, through our strengths. So. Um, we also discussed prior to the interview how you have a team, not just about, um, not just coaches. You have uh, physical trainers, you have mental trainers. Could you talk 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 a bit more about that, please? Yeah, look, I mean, in anything, I don't think it's just sport. You need a full team, and you need people that have different strengths. I'm not going to pretend and sit back and pretend I can be a specialist in every single category and domain. I mean, I just don't have the time in the world. So the thing was, let's get specialists in every area that's important to develop a full, well-rounded athlete or, or high performer. And when I say high performer, I just don't mean tennis. I mean, it could be in music. It could be in uh, academic, academia. It could be in business. The high performer needs a full rounded team of support. And so that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to hire uh, specialists in nutrition and mental performance and fitness in recruiting and in, in, in every domain that we possibly could with the resources we had and come together and really, you know, cushion the elite performers uh, from every angle and aspect. So, so you're basically, basically going for an all, an all round, an all round athlete. Right. So are you only focused on just the athletic component of business or are you also focused on the ec academic side? Oh yeah. I mean, we have NCAA recruiting, we have SAT tutors in place one for math, one for reading. Um, like I said, and I've always been big on this, even, even when I was in the NCAA, I tell, my, I tell our aspiring athletes, first pursue the education. And, you know, there's a lot of cons in, in, in sport, but there's a lot of benefits too. And one of the benefits in tennis, let's go into tennis here for a second, is if I go to Harvard and Harvard's ranked 50 in the, in the country, and I'm choosing between Harvard and Baylor and Baylor is ranked five in the country. And I'm going to go play six at Baylor. That's five. And, and, and I'm going to go play one at Harvard. That's 
that's 50. Okay, so yeah, maybe I'm going a better team through Baylor, but I don't get to play the number ones across the country. I mean, I get to play the sixes. Now, if I go to Harvard, I get the better degree and I get to play the number ones in the country. So when it comes to the NCAA, pursue the academia, go play the highest position there. That's a benefit from that. Um, you're going to end up with a better degree. And you know what? I always believe that if you're competitive enough, no matter what position, no matter what team you play, you find a way to come through. And there's benefits to being a number one on a team, on a weaker team, and there's benefits to being a six on a stronger team. You, you, so the, the outlier is academia, academics. So pursue that and, and then take the benefit from the situation you're in. So, How do you think of an athlete who is, let's say, nine or 10 years old, how, uh, what, what would your suggestion be to that athlete on how to manage what they want to do in the future in terms of sports, if they want to go professional, they want to play NCAA, if they want to focus solely on academics, like how do you tell them to manage it all in a good way where it's sustainable? Well, there's two things to that. First and foremost, when it comes to young children navigating their path towards professional circuit, well, I think a great coach looks after the person first. So as somebody as a role model for them, as somebody looking out for the individual before the athlete, I tell them to make sure they pursue uh, a great education, that they have that as a background to fall back on. We want our athletes to be uh, as academically supported as possible. That's first and foremost, because what we're trying to do is not look after the athlete. We're trying to look after the person. And we know how important that is. I mean, that gives you a world of freedom. And maybe, you know what, maybe tennis isn't your future pathway to make the biggest impact and fulfill yourself uh, as extensively as perhaps a different route. So we want to be able to give you that option, first and foremost. And secondly, again, if you're competitive enough, you find a way. You find a way to pursue and, and be strong in your academics and, and do a great job and become the best tennis player you can. Well-roundedness and balance helps your tennis, doesn't hurt it. Secondly, We've got to develop a healthy outlook towards the sport because you need to give yourself a chance to be willing to stay in the sport from a, from a standpoint of your, your outlook. You got to stay in long enough to give you the best chance to actually reach your fullest potential. See, if we hound and we press tennis on these kids from such a young age, burnout rate, uh, there's studies on this. If you're, if you're, you're not multi-sport and you're not well-rounded, uh, up to at least the age of 13, burnout rate is extremely high. You see that in some of the best NCAA players in, in, in obviously the U.S. And so we need to, uh, more importantly, teach them how to compete in a healthy way, how to actually enjoy the process of competition, not dread it, which is so common. So you want to you want to give these kids uh, the ability to reach their fullest potential from a young age, develop within them and help them and encourage them to have the healthiest outlook on competition progress as possible. We want to give them the chance to be somebody that wants to play till they're 35 years old so that they can reach their full potential. Cause you know what, it could be 34 uh, when you have your best uh, professional year. So we don't want them to be sick and tired of the sport and the pressures of it and not enjoy competing at 23 when they were going to peak at 34. So that's the whole idea nine, 10 years old, develop the healthiest outlook within them uh, to pursue this sport. I just want to add that um, we also discussed how you told me that um, even if you're able to make a difference in one kid's life and, and you can turn that kid into basically an elite person overall in life, your mission would be a success on that. So I, I just wanted to add that. Appreciate that. Um, one more question. The last question. Um, how do you plan on expanding your business? Like, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? So here's how I see ourselves expanding. And I've, and I've talked extensively with our team on this. How does Mike Agassi develop Andre Agassi? Mike was a boxer. Agassi, Andre was pursuing tennis. How does Richard Williams, who didn't competi competitively pursue uh, tennis developed two unbelievable sisters. And yeah, you could say it's the academy. I mean, whatever, but no, 
who, who was with them the most? It was the parents and they had nothing to do with tennis, but you know what they instilled within them? Strong core values that and those core values were the most important thing to becoming elite. And so what we want to do as we expand is implement our core values that are applicable across all domains, business, academics, music, uh, uh, different sports. I mean, persistence is common in every domain. Uh, resilience is common. Uh, composure is common. This has nothing to do with tennis. When I go on and I talk, if you ever go on the social media and I talk about a lot, you know, I go on my little lectures, a lot of them have nothing to do with tennis. If you actually break it down, it, it could help you in, in, in any area of your life. And so with these core values is how we look to expand and obviously uh, connecting with people that are extremely competent in their specific areas of expertise. So. Do you have any plans in the future to, once the business gets uh, like really, really popular, you have enough money to spare and give, do you have any plans on giving full scholarships to kids, recruiting them, bring them at a young age, and then basically take over their academics and their sports as well? Do you have any plans on that? Yes and no. I have, I have two outlooks on that. First, you know, if the kid, if I feel the kid really doesn't have an opportunity to pursue this sport, doesn't have an opportunity to get into the game, then we would be more than happy to give a full scholarship. Um, but for most cases, there's always a way. Um, you know, there's always a way. Um, so what we, the reason why we have an elite team is that where, where that's almost where we give the full scholarships to the elite team is because I feel like they've now earned an opportunity to have these resources. See, I believe that you could give a kid everything and he could pan out to be nothing, but a kid that may not have anything but has the right uh, core beliefs uh, can pan out to be something. They find a way and in fact, it ends up being strength. Their weakness ends up being their strength. So when I'm looking at these kids, I'm looking for who came from nothing and turned nothing into gold, not who can I give gold to? And then, you know, it's like, no, I want to first see that they have the capability to turn nothing into something. And then when I see that talent inside them, uh, then we implement. And that's why actually, you know, one of the higher up people in, in Mission Elite is a talent scout. And he's very versed in, in spotting this trait in them more than I am for sure. Um, but you know, that's really my outlook on it. Uh, I want, I want, I want to see, uh, something proven first. And there's always, you can, you know, as long as you have even a little bit, you can make that a little bit and a little more and you made a little more, you know, it's like, well, mission leads started with nothing. We went, we went in you know, and now we're building. So that's, that's a value that holds really strong to me. Um, you know, wherever there's a will, there's a way on. Huh? Exactly. You got to find a way. You, nowadays we have so many resources and so you know there's always a way and, and you know what if i have nothing and, and it finances what i need find a way to fundraise simple as that got to be a competitor uh everybody has an opportunity to get something you've got to be out there and you just gotta you know put in the time put in the effort put in the work exactly yeah so. thank you um i think this will do we'll conclude the interview mm -hmm. thank you so much mr manji and i and I really wish good luck. At, wish you luck in the future, and I hope your company does well. And I really, really, I'm really looking forward to you changing the world when it comes to, especially tennis, because I have a personal connection to tennis, right. and I know there's a lot of ways that you could personally help a lot of the young kids to achieve their goals. Appreciate that very much. All thank, the thank best. You. Thank you, man. Cheers.